today i will go to a special journey which in due course of time with the development in all spheres we have forgotten on this earth the we got after this birth such a wonderful body and this wonderful body works through its software the best computer ever evolved is this human body and the best software is the human mind whenever we purchase any gadget we always see that what all this there in that gadget what all those apps are there we try to download them try to find out each and everything and then ultimately we try to use it optimally but such a wonderful gift given by the god to us we have forgotten everything and we have started searching things here and there today i am trying to show you those things which really will help you in understanding these things the current scenario is that it is a single dimensional what does this mean currently more emphasis is on treating the symptoms or the removing the effect of the disease for example if somebody is suffering with hypertension will will be treating with the anti hypertensive drugs if there is a diabetes we will treating with the diabetes if there is infection then we will treating with the antibiotics or antivirals for that matter whatever is the outcome we try to treat that outcome the three dimensional healthcare we have to understand that it is defined as a treatment that not only includes the body but also it includes the mind and the soul and what is all about it actually this soul is nothing but the energy flowing inside our body and this energy flowing inside our body in each and every organ at a cellular level this is the life sustaining force that is maintaining the homeostasis in our body we're we'll talking about these things what is the definition of health we have to understand first the who has defined that health is a state of complete physical mental and social well being just now we are listening the other speaker that was the social well being she was talking about all the time it is not merely absence of disease or infirmity and when we talk about disease only this is one dimension the physical health means the proper functioning of all the external and the internal parts and organs of the, of the person's body which allows the person to perform their daily tasks nor normally without any limitation mental health can manage the general life stresses to be able to participate in society and to be able to work effectively and social health how the person interfere interacts with the friends family and the society recently the who is trying to include the emotional coefficient and the spiritual coefficient also considering to include the emotional and the spiritual well being to the definition and i personally feel until unless these two things are considered in, in totality we cannot cure the disease now what happens in the development of disease how disease uh, appears initially there is exposure in the stage of susceptibility when the patient is okay there is a infection or any other thing comes and then a stage of subclinical disease and the pathological changes appear inside the body and then on the onset of the symptom then the role of the doctor comes and they at uh, the stage of the clinical disease and we treat like uh, as we have already discussed and then ultimately either patient improves or the patient succumbs that is the usual story and how this happens human behavior plays an important role in the spread of the infectious disease 
and understanding the influence of the behavior on the spread of disease. Human behavior is based on the attitudes, belief systems, opinions, and awareness of the disease. An individual behavior, when directed by mindfulness, meditation, and rational thought, can alter the course of the pandemic and reduce the mortality which we have seen in this pandemic, in this uh, epidemic, COVID-19 pandemic. In the COVID-19, we have seen, if suppose there are 100 patients who, who got infected through COVID-19, out of them, 90% patients, they improved without anything, even by knowing that they have ever got the infection. But the 10% patients, they developed symptoms. Out of them, the 5% patients, they improved with a little bit of medi medications or without medication. And the 5%, they became serious. Out of them, 4% they recovered and 1% they succumbed and died. So this is the story. And the most important thing I have uh, treated personally, thousands of patients I know, most of the important thing, aspect, beside the infectivity and other things, uh, the immunity of the patient and its mental status. That in the second wave, the people were coming just by uh, RT-PCR positive report and they were thinking that they have received a death certificate. Death warrant has come and I'm going to succumb. And that reduces the immunity altogether and the patient never improves. I've seen many young people have died. This, to understand three-dimensional approach, we have to see that how our body parts, they work. You know, primarily, I don't have to explain it, there is a parasympathetic system and there is a sympathetic system. And both of these systems, they work, the sympathetic system works for emergency and the parasympathetic works for the normal behavior. How a disease is produced? The sympathetic overactivity releases the stress hormones, which is a cycle of the mental and physical disease, and it weakens the inner strength. Before understanding more, we have to understand who am I? This is a very important question. We have never talked about it. I am, this body is not I am. This body, if you remove a hand, if you remove a leg, it, we does, uh, don't die. We are energy. The human body is composed of billions of cells that use chemical and electromagnetic energy to maintain the homeostasis. Each and every cell of the body gets these two things, and electromagnetic waves, they flow throughout the body up to cellular level through nervous system. And all these uh, things can be recorded as an EEG, ECG, EMG, and which we do every day. Body is just the functional uh, functionality of the body is just the effect of this energy. When this energy goes away, the body is dead. A person walk, come, comes walking or on a stretcher alive, and as soon as that energy flows away, we call it dead body. And the person, person is handed over, and we declare, now there is nothing. Now, therefore, we have to focus mainly on mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being. There is a general adaptive adaptation syndrome that initially there is a stress. The person can, uh, person can sustain it. And subsequently, in phase two, there is a resistance, and the person is able to cope with it. And third stage is a stage of exhaustion when the patient is not able to cope physically as well as mentally and develop full frank disease. It may be treated or the patient may die. What is stress? We all the time talk about stress, stress, stress. In fact, we have become stressful by talking the stress. It is a mental state in which internal and external pressures exceed the inner strength, that is the coping mechanism, then the stress appears. The vicious cycle of mental disease, the mental disease and the physical disease, that means the deviation from the ease, is the, uh, is the stress, is producing stress. It leads to germination of the negative team and it actually originates from the negative team. I'll be talking about this team. The pathology, 
genesis is the imbalance between the inner strength and the external stress. Negative team is the uh, which which causes this thing. <coughs> and the extrinsic and intrinsic stress it increases. The activation of the uh, psychological factors, that is depression, hostility, isolation, type A behavior, personality, anxiety, all these behavior, they cause, the, they, they are de de developed due to the negative thoughts. The thought is the genesis of everything. We don't give that much importance to the thought. This whole body functions as per our thoughts. We have decided to organize this ACP workshop, ACP conference here. It is a thought. We are here sitting. We decided to become a doctor. We prepare for the exams, appear there, become a doctor. Everything is a thought. And thought, if it goes on a, on a longer space, then it becomes emotions. If you continuously repeat the same thought again, 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 then it becomes emotions. And ultimately, when it becomes fixed, then it becomes the attitude of the person. And this attitude is stored as a memory. There are two types of thoughts. One are the positive thoughts, and the negative thoughts. Most of us are living in the negative thoughts. What are negative thoughts and what are positive thoughts? We have to understand that. And what they do, negative thoughts. Negative thoughts is jealousy, hatred, anger, ego. All those bad feelings which we kept, create inside our body, that is the neg negative thoughts. And the positive thoughts is the lovefulness, blissfulness, happiness, peacefulness, good wishes for everybody. That is the positive thoughts. And it acts in the hypothalamus. They release the stress hormone when there's a negative thoughts, and then activation of the neuroendocrine axis, sympathetic overdrive, and 3F response of the body system. That means whenever we are in a negative thought, we are all the time in emergency state. And what does this emergency state do? I'll again uh, tell you that later on. The, and the positive team, the team is again the same thing, but they are lovefulness, blissfulness, happiness, good feelings for everybody. Now these thoughts, they result into action. But you will be surprised to know there are certain things very specific for the mind which we really uh, don't understand and don't follow. That's why we create these negative thoughts. The thought, single thought coming in the mind itself is so important that it multiplies very fast. Word and action are not, not that much important as the thought inside our mind. And it multiplies one neuron from one uh, end to another end. The, it is transmitted, the electrical current is transmitted in one by one ten thousand seconds. Try to understand. And then it stimulates the another neuron and when it stimulates the other neuron, it doesn't stimulate a single neuron. It stimulates 10,000 neurons in 1 by 10,000 seconds. Speed is so fast. Meaning thereby, within a second time, that thought which we have created spreads in the whole of the mind. Whether it is positive or negative. If it is negative, then that electromagnetic current goes downwards. It stimulates the sympathetic system, system uh, 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 sympathetic system, and it uh, releases the, uh, 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 the neurotransmitters, which are excitatory, and also all the hormones are released upside down. Now, this is the thing which I have already explained to you. There is one more interesting fact we have discussed so many times. Whenever there are negative thoughts, for example, jealousy, hatred, anger, fight, quarrel, there are so many things happening every day, comparison, competition. And when, it, and when we are in uh, normal harmony, then normal time, the free radicals, the uh, reactive uh, uh, species, 63,000 free radicals 
are released in one second. And the mitochondria of a cell can metabolize this much. But it is when we are in harmony, when we are in peace, when we are in happiness. But most of the time, we are not in that stage. And we release whatever extra is released. When we are fighting and quarreling, it reaches up to 2 lakhs. And that can never be metabolized. That remains inside the cell. And every cell is in mitosis. Continuously it is my, uh, dividing again and again. And when these cells divide, at that time certain cells are uh, divided at a faster speed. And they become the cancer cells. When these uh, oxidative free radicals are in this concentration, the immune cells, they are decreased. And what is the role of immune cells? Immune cells, they phagocytose the cancer cell, any foreign material, any bacteria, any virus, they phagocytose and they kill that thing. But when we are doing this type of behavior, the immune cell itself is in, in a too much shortage. So they cannot phagocytose, they cannot do uh, this scavenger activity. That's why then the disease starts appearing. That is the reason that somebody, 90% people, survived without any symptom even. And 10% people, they are, so they are succumbed. Nowadays, we were not made for the diseases. Our body was made by the Almighty to enjoy this world. But today, everybody, each and everybody is suffering on an average two diseases. This I have already explained. Metabolic syndrome is a classical disease which can be understood by this mechanism. I will not talk about detail in uh, this metabolic uh, diseases. I will talk about the telomeres. This has I have already mentioned the references, various references from where these uh, data have been taken away. Telomeres are the caps at the end of the chromosomes. Short telomeres are the biomarkers for worsening the health and early death. The research has shown that meditation-based intervention may prevent the telomeres attrition or increase telomeres length leading to longer lifespan. This is a proved. We can change gene expression also by modifying eating habits and also by this uh, type of behavior, which uh, the, uh, the parasympathetic behavior, and that's how we can upregulate the genes and we can and, and prevent the disease. And we, if we have a negative thought process, we upregulate the genes and, and the, it, uh, it, it uh, down regulates the gene and causes the disease. Everybody who has developed a hypertension at the age of 40 years, diabetes at the age of 40 years, 45 years or 35 years, was he diabetic when he was born? Yes, he was diabetic since birth. But it was not expressed. The gene expression took place at the age of 35 or 40 years. Meaning thereby that by that time, his behavior was such pattern that all those genes who were uh, responsible for diabetes or hypertension, they have expressed at this stage. And we can change it also. We can change by down-regulating these genes. We can change our, our, uh, the, uh, these, these things. And diseases can be prevented or stopped and can be cured also if we know how to change it. This is another very interesting uh, story which has really changed my life. I will uh, quote it uh, here so that you can also change your life. This is a, uh, a study conducted uh, by the uh, uh, multicentric trial, one at Molana Ajad uh, Medical College, Delhi, and BJ Medical College, Ahmedabad, and Mount Abu Open uh, uh, Heart Study. It was done by Dr. Satish Gupta under the uh, influence of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, the former president of India. At that time, he was the president of DRDO, director of DRDO. And this, this study was sponsored by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. 
in which in that study what they did the results were wonderful registration of those patients were done from april 2000 to 2001 to determine the contribution of the stress management through raj yoga the meditation the same diet exercise schedule were prescribed to both the groups 275 moderate to severe cad patients were randomized the healthy lifestyles and control group i will not go into detail i will just tell you the findings ultimate what happened the healthy lifestyle intervention led to modification of disease causing uh, factors leading to decreased anxiety decreased anxiety depression anger grief particularly beneficial to the patients with a type a personality healthy behavior reflected in daily routine like cessation of smoking adherence to diet and exercise and all achieved with success through meditation the 93% patients who were registered in this who went into uh, uh, this program were improved who were having triple vessel disease coronary artery disease they improved without any surgical intervention without any angioplasty without any uh, cavg and that was the wonderful results i have met those patients also who were cured i have met more than two dozen patients who were cured by this disease, by by this method and they are all very happy one thing we have also forgotten about the chrono medicine this chrono medicine is coined by friends halbert and this is the most important thing it was uh, it is said that he has coined the term but actually actually in 1958 uh, uh, but actually this was known to our from since very vedic time the fact was known to our indian scientists which were known at that time rishis and munis from vedical which instructed one to rise early in the morning and meditate between 3:30 to 4 o'clock in order to calm one's mind this adds in the balanced hormonal release and prevents metabolic diseases circadian rhythm i don't think i should uh, go in detail because you know all these mechanisms sleep pattern this is another important aspect which we have which we have forgotten in the morning most of us are sleeping at four uh, at up to uh, six o'clock seven o'clock the sleep during early morning between four to eight a.m is rem sleep and the characteristic of this rem sleep is that we it is associated with nightmares nightmares means you are sleeping but your sympathetic system is activated when sympathetic system is activated every everything will be upside down therefore just asking people to get up early in the morning it will cure, it will cure him 50% and you we all know that insulin is released maximally in the morning time cortisol is also released in the morning time and 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 therefore we must get up early in the morning healthy food is very important you can uh, this 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 i don't think it is required at this time one thing i would like to mention here this is very important we like non vegetarian food for taste purpose also and for by for healthy purpose also we say but very very important thing we have forgotten that whenever anybody any individual any animal is killed at that time what happens he is in agony he is in fear all those agony and fear and sadness is there even the mind of that animal is not that grown not well developed but even then it is there in their mind and all those vibrations they remain with that material with that meat whatever is there and those definitely causes those those things which we don't want now there's one more important thing initially when we are stud we have studied the med medicines we were taught that we have to write rx before the prescription now i have rarely seen any prescription where this rx is written we have started writing advised now advised is done by us the rx is the a greek word which means take thou 
I am writing this prescription on your name. When, when we give this responsibility to Almighty, then the things happen like miracles. Now, this is something very important to understand. We have understood clearly that we should be happy, we should be peaceful, we should be blissful, we should be loving. Uh, we, we should do all those positive things. But whenever the time comes, when the situation comes, the old thing, old behavior comes immediately. Why? For that reason, we have to understand this. There are three parts of the consciousness. One is the conscious memories, third is subconscious memories, and four, third is the unconscious memories. The, these are the memories which we have lived throughout this life. Maybe in the past lives, we don't know, but this life we have lived, and those things, memories, goes deeper into the consciousness, and the conscious memory, which has learned just now that we should be blissful, happy, peaceful, this is only the 5% of the brain. The 95% majority, it inhibits. And automatically, the, the frequency, the fastness of the afferent and inferent neuron system is so fast, 1 upon 10,000. Remember this figure, that 1 upon 10,000 uh, of a second, it goes like this. Somebody has come here with, uh, with, with some fearful mind and something uh, uh, wrong words in his mouth. And as soon as he comes, you become angry and you slap him. It takes a fraction of a second. By the time you are able to understand that, he, that I should not do it. By the time things happen and you, you develop all that negativity and ultimately it results into disease. How meditation helps in, the, in, the, in the managing the stress? In, in, the, in, this, in this, what we do, our mind thinks as per our past experience. There are three parts of the mind. One is mind, there's the intellect, and third is the memories. The mind works 24 hours, 365 days. Intellect guides the mind what to do, what not to do. And intellect is guided by the memories which you have recorded. And all the memories are negative. Therefore, those all memories, they guide the mind and you do the wrong things. And the result is there which, is, which, which we cannot prevent. In meditation, what we do, because we have understood that we cannot control it. Our mind is such a manner that we cannot control our thoughts. We have to do something extra so that we can control our thoughts and we do correct things and we can make ourselves healthy. The only thing is this, we have to write, meditation is to write the correct, uh, uh, we write the memories willingly, willfully in the right direction. That is really meditation, and that's how the disease-causing genes are turned off. There's a better oxygen consumption, there's a clarity of mind, thoughts big questions, and heart rates, it slows down, parasympathetic system uh, are up, uh, uh, regulated, and adrenal glands produces less cortisol, there's a deeper breathing, and that stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system for relaxation, and better immune system functioning, and that's how the patient becomes better. Meditation, where we focus intensely on our breathing pattern, mindful breathing and concentration on positive thoughts. That, that is the basic concern of this. The take-home message is, revitalize the practice of writing Rx. Remember the God every moment whenever you see the patient. It does the miracles. Change your sleep pattern. Go early to the bed. Get up early in the morning and diet, pure Sudh Sattvic diet, and lifestyle. We write every time lifestyle modification without knowing what is life. We write lifestyle modification, meaning thereby walking, yoga, this exercise, that exercise. That is not life, lifestyle modification. Life is a change of thought process. Until unless we change the thought process, we cannot change the life. So that lifestyle modification, we have to start writing this thing, that this thought, you have to change the thought process, and thought process can be changed only by one method, that is meditation. Meditation also prevents bacterial and viral infection by activating immune system. Meditation prevents and cures the metabolic syndrome. Mahatma Gandhi has said it is the health that is real wealth, not the pieces of gold and silver. Therefore, we have to prevent 
the disease before it appears on the surface. And that's how we will become rich. When the diet is wrong, medicine of, is of no use. When the diet is wrong, medicine is of no use. And when the diet is correct, the medicine you know. is of need. Uh, medicine is of no need. There is no need of medicine. So the end, end message is, last message is that we should lead our life, lifestyle as a meditative lifestyle. That is known as all the time meditation is not sitting and what time and, and doing meditation. That you can do, that is a better, a good thing. But throughout the day, just remembering the God all the time, you will think correctly. There is one special thing about the mind, which you have never noticed. There are two things I will tell you about the mind, then I will close my uh, subject. One is, mind is most fertile, more than soil. Soil gives the same fruits, whatever you see, but the mind multiplies million times immediately without knowing you. Second thing, that mind can think only one thing at a time. This is the better part. The mind cannot think the two thoughts at a time. So whenever we engage the mind, willingly, willfully, that you have to think this, then it, it cannot think negative. And when it cannot think negative, then it has to think positive. And when you think positive, the whole system becomes positive. And this is my confidence. I have experienced not only whatever I have talked, I, I, am, I have practiced also in my department where I became the head of the department and three years back. I emphasized the same things. At that time, one of my professors was having at least half a dozen diseases with metabolic syndrome and 130 kg. The other, other professor is having him, uh, all the three syndromes, diabetes, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, leading to angioplasty and everything. And there were half a dozen uh, court cases. There were many FIRs. There were this and that. Everything was going on there. I joined as a head. I said, what all this going on? This is not life. This is not life. You can't do anything. You can't achieve anything. You will remain sick physically as well as mentally. You have to change your attitude. And to your surprise, my whole department has changed today. Dr. Narsingh Verma is, uh, is, is evidence of that. There is nothing, whole department moves alike. In one year time, because two years we have lost for the COVID, we developed so much work in the department, which was sleeping for last uh, nearly 40 years, that we have developed Center of Excellence for the Pharmacovigilance. We are doing the prescription audit of the whole of the university. We, uh, we, we have increased the seats, which were four for med MD medicine, now to 26 per year. That means there are 78 students, MD students in my department, and we have established clinical pharmacology department with four seats of DM clinical pharmacology. Now, whole department is working like this. It is all because of this positive energy. I think we should develop this positive energy in ourselves, and we can do miracles. Thank you very much for patience.